the most insane moments on divorce court. So why would you think that that was the proper time and that was such a good time to have a child by your wife when you have another woman pregnant? Your Honor, like I said, we, I just wasn't thinking about that at the time. You weren't thinking I was right. I get so tired of you people not thinking about the results. We open with a happily ever after shot of Dante and Teresa. Dante and Teresa had been together for five years, a relationship with passion, adventure, and laughter. But as soon as they tied the knot, things started to go wrong. And now, as they stood in the courtroom, the truth spilled out. Dante had cheated on her, repeatedly, and had only stayed with her because it was cheaper than getting a divorce. Can you imagine hearing this from your partner? How would you feel if your significant other said in front of a group of people that they wouldn't leave you because it's too expensive, but they would cheat on you? It's a shocking statement. Teresa and Dante Nixon were married for five years, but the marriage was in trouble almost as soon as it started. When did you find out that the marriage was not so great? The first time I found out he was cheating on me. I cheated on her several times. I sure did. Couldn't you have just left if you were no longer interested in her? As Dante and Teresa's argument raged on, the tension in the room becoming palpable, and when the judge posed the ultimate question, asking if she would trust a stranger over her own husband, Teresa's response left everyone stunned. What would have been your response in that situation? Her words cut like a knife, piercing through the courtroom with a raw honesty that was impossible to ignore. Well, the woman plainly stated that if her husband could stand and take a vow and promise to honor and keep love and everything else and got and do what he did, then she would believe a stranger over him? How devastating must it be for a woman to resort to such harsh words to lay bare the rawest parts of her heart in front of a room full of strangers? Well, they called your house? Yeah, they called my house. You couldn't hang up? Oh yeah, I could have hung up, but I, by that time I knew he had been cheating. I wanted to know what was going on. This and you believe strangers children. telling you that? Uh, yes, I did, because mm -hmm. if he could stand there and take a vow and promise to honor, keep love and everything else and go and do what he did, then I should believe a stranger over him because I had a better chance of them telling me the truth. The courtroom was left stunned as they heard the unthinkable revelation. Dante had impregnated both his wife and girlfriend at the same time. Any sane person would be thinking right now, what is wrong with you, Dante? But what was even more alarming was Dante's blatant lack of remorse. When the judge confronted him and questioned how he could justify his actions, Dante showed no signs of guilt. He callously stated that he hadn't thought about the consequences of his actions revealing a careless and reckless attitude. So why would you think that that was the proper time and that was such a good time to have a child by your wife when you have another woman pregnant? You knew that if she found out that was gonna hurt her and was gonna end the relationship, which means leaving the kids without a father or breaking up the relationship. Your Honor, like I said, we, I just wasn't thinking about that at the time. You weren't thinking it was right. I get so tired of you people not thinking about the results. As for the dramatic saga of Dante and Teresa's tumultuous marriage, the decision will be taken in the next episode. But that was just the beginning of this suspenseful tale. The burning question on everyone's mind was not about the couple's fate, but rather a more pressing matter. Who would win custody of the beloved dog? The judge's ruling finally came down. The stakes were raised even higher. The fate of the Fury companion rested on a single factor, the children. In a stunning twist, the judge declared that the parent with custody of the children would also be granted custody of the dog. But ultimately, the judge's decision was made with the dog's best interest in mind, as it had formed an unbreakable bond with the children and would be safest in their care. We all know that dogs support us emotionally, so do you think it was the right decision? She's not a okay. beautiful dog no, take. No, it's, she doesn't it's just, care no, for the you dog. Know that's just, it's just the first thing that I purchased on my own. You are just being so petty about the it. First thing that you ever it's the purchased first on thing your own. that I could grab and say, Then you should have took the dog with you when you left. If you wanted the dog, you should have packed her stuff up and took it right along with you. I would. Well, you should have. The dog's got a leash and she's got a food dish. All you had to do was get to stepping. You could have took her. Does it not come as a shock when two people totally in love suddenly decide to get divorced? What convinced them to finally reach that decision? Let's find out. It's a tale of two people deeply in love 
but with a hint of uncertainty about their future together. They have been together for a year and a half, but something seems to be bothering Isa. She recently admitted that she has noticed some signs that have been raising some concerns. Jeffrey is a caring partner who looks after Isa's children, cooks for them, and shows great thoughtfulness. Despite all this, there is something that troubles Isa about the idea of marrying Jeffrey. What could it be? I'm here with Dorisa King and Jeffrey Turner. The two of you have been together for a year and a half. Ms. King, I'm going to start with you. Why are you worried about marrying? Because he has a few warning signs that just delay the process. Jeffrey is very caring, considerate, loving, passionate. He cooks, he cleans, he's very domestic. He's Ooh. great with my children. He picks them up from school. But Jeffrey lies, Your Honor. Can you feel the tension rising? She started to get worried. But why? The lies he told were the cause. At first, it was his job, but then he spun a tale about being a professional boxer. Was it all just a ploy to impress Isa, or was there something else going on in Jeffrey's mind? The situation takes a strange turn when he shows Isa a medal, a medal that she suspects might not be real. What other secrets is Jeffrey hiding? The suspense is palpable. He said he was a professional boxer. He was a prize boxer. He would bring medals to my home. They're still hanging up on my wall. He brought medals. Mr. Turner, did you lie about being a boxer? And did you bring her some medals that you really hadn't won? Where'd you get the medal from? My cousin won them. <laughs> Will Isa be able to trust Jeffrey again? That's a question for later. Let's see what Jeffrey has to say about getting married to Isa. Why does he doubt that it will be a successful marriage? As Jeffrey shared Isa's social media stardom and abundant friendship, his demeanor remained calm and collected. However, his demeanor suddenly shifted when he stumbled upon messages exchanged between Isa and her ex. Do you think it was appropriate to talk to an ex like that? Jeffrey stated that the contents of those messages hinted towards some steaming moments they shared in bed which made Jeffrey's heart skip a beat. He revealed to the judge that he stumbled upon some extremely inappropriate messages that could potentially sabotage Isa's reputation. She has a lot of friends. There's a, a ex that she, you know, she told me when we got into a relationship that she would continue to remain friends with her ex. And I said, that's, you know, that's no problem because you had a life before you met me. Right. The one ex, you know, been inboxing her inappropriate messages on Facebook. When they was together, how good the sex was, her face was, having sex. I'm with you. Finally, after evaluating both parties, the judge advised Isa to be patient with Jeffrey and not treat him like a 30-year-old when he was only 22. The judge emphasized the importance of allowing Jeffrey to mature and develop at his own pace. Furthermore, the judge recommended that Jeffrey seek help for his habit of lying and evaluate the relationship as they continue to grow together. The judge also suggested that if the couple decides to stay together, they should consider getting married. Do you think it was the right decision? They're big kids and there's nothing wrong with it. And you can't expect, you can't be upset with him because he's acting his age. You can't put him in the role that he's my man. Now he's got to mature up and, and, and take all these responsibilities on when he hasn't developed to that stage. If when you mature, that trajectory isn't what you want. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yes. This matter is adjourned. David wants to end it after five years of marriage. What caused him to take this intense decision? He also told the judge that she pawned her engagement ring. What? Well, he stayed in a relationship for so long because of their children. This is the matter of Angel Fuentes versus Tony Davidson. I'm advised that after five and a half years of marriage, you're ready to throw in the towels. Nobody wants to stay married these days. Mr. Davidson, I think it's you that wants to end this. Yeah, I want to end it. Two weeks after we were married, she had started cheating on me. In her defense, Samantha brought the man Tony accused of her sleeping with to the court. Let's see what he has to say about it. Samantha, with a look of pure determination on her face, firmly denies any accusation of her husband catching her in bed with another man. In fact, she claims that the gentleman who accompanied her to court was simply there to lend a hand as she packed up her things, long after the marriage had already ended. But hold up! The judge interjects, reminding Samantha that until the divorce is finalized, the marriage is technically still ongoing. 
Talk about a twist in the plot. I already had my own place and he helped me move out. He never caught me in no bed with nobody. This was like after the marriage was totally over with. Well, the marriage is not over yet because you haven't gotten a divorce. As far as the feelings, they're gone. As soon well, as feelings may be gone, but you still married. Right. Let me remind you. Right. Until that divorce is in. Right. Well, I figure he should have to help me pay for the divorce. Well, he he's doing do that, that, but the marriage is not over yet. Right. Get ready for a story that will make your jaw drop. Samantha recently spilled the beans to the judge about how her ex-husband Tony pulled a fast one on her. Instead of getting her a proper wedding ring, he made her rent a fake one on their big day to save face. But wait, it gets even crazier. Tony then convinced Samantha to get a tattoo on her ring finger to symbolize their eternal love. Would you trade a tattoo for a real ring if your spouse asked you to? Now, Samantha's moved on to new love and wants the tattoo gone, so she can proudly wear her new bae's ring. He has one too. I have one too. Hold on, I'm looking. What is that tattoo of? The tattoo is barbed yes, wire? it's embarrassing. It's what does the tattoo to... represent? Before he got Eternal married, he love. talked me into it. Yeah. So this is the tattoo, the representation of the love? It, it was uh, represented because forever. Free, that means that, I see, I, I've always grew up in the... Is this your wedding ring? No, ma'am. Step tattoo. back. Hold on to your seats, folks, because the judge has made a final decision that's sure to get people talking. After carefully considering all the evidence presented, the judge ruled that the husband was not responsible for paying for removing his wife's tattoo. Why, you ask? Well, the judge reasoned that the tattoo was a symbol of the husband's love, much like a wedding ring, and therefore he shouldn't be penalized for expressing his affection. However, if the tattoo is really bothering his wife to the point of no return, the judge suggested that she should take matters into her own hands and get it removed herself. Now that's a verdict that's bound to stir up some lively debate. He didn't force you down there to put that tattoo on. It was a symbol of your love. It's no different than when you exchange wedding rings together and you give those rings, you exchange rings as a symbol of your love for each other to be together forever. The only difference is the ring can come off and you can throw it away. My verdict is he does not have to pay the $1,200 or any other sum to remove it. If you want to remove, you pay for it. Judgment for the husband. Do you believe that some people would do anything to save their marriage? This is the case with the man whose wife is looking to have a polygamous relationship with him. Let's see if he would stay with her. Samantha and Franklin were having a little chat with the judge about their marital issues. It seemed like the root of their problem was Samantha's insecurity with her husband's friendly nature towards other females. To make matters worse, Samantha would snoop through Franklin's emails and let jealousy take over her emotions. Instead of reassuring her, Franklin's behavior only fueled her insecurities. As the couple explained their situation, Franklin even went on to defend his actions by claiming that Samantha had violated his privacy in the past. But hold on, the judge was not amused. With a stern look on their face, they told the couple that going through each other's emails was a major breach of privacy. Instead, they should communicate and work together to solve their problems, not dig through each other's personal correspondence. Trust and communication are key in any relationship, and snooping through someone's private messages is a big no-no. Won't you agree? I've been faithful for uh, six, years, six years we've been together. Do you believe that? I don't believe that he's cheated, but he, I believe he's actively looking at all times. I'm not. What she does is she goes through my emails. She, I don't know how she does it. I don't know what she, she, she has my passwords. I don't know how she goes. She... Samantha also revealed that her husband has anger issues. This comes as a shock considering he is a friendly person and that's what made Samantha jealous. Samantha recounts a harrowing experience where her attempt to soothe her husband's anger with a massage resulted in an explosive outburst. Despite her best intentions, her husband's rage intensified and he lashed out, declaring that he didn't need a massage because he was not a woman. Would you believe that? To add insult to injury, he even struck her with a wad of cash he had been counting, leaving her in shock and disbelief. 
When he returned, he found out that Samantha took her bag and left along with their savings. She me up, she said, can I do a facial on you? I said, I don't need no facial. She gets mad, her feelings get hurt. She's throwing off, going to the bathroom, slam the door. Do you know why she wanted to give you a facial? Because you were on the phone. I ain't never did no facial. It wasn't like I just came out, let me give you a facial like he's a female. He was arguing, he was upset. I was trying to give him a massage. Franklin's eyes lit up as he recounted the story of how he and his ex-wife met. Amidst the chatter and noise of the party, there was one girl who stood out, and that was her. As he shared how they spent countless unforgettable moments together, it was clear that their love was once a beautiful thing. But here's the twist. Despite their mutual decision to move from one place to another and the absence of finger pointing, they still ended up in the divorce court. So what went wrong? So I met her in 09. Um, we were at a party at a, at a friend's house. You know, she was the only person there that caught my attention. Neo soul, square, and I like that. You know, I like Neo women. soul and square. Yeah, I like my women neo soul, um, conscious. For you the like first... them conscious? <laughs> <laughs> After much deliberation, the wise judge finally reached a verdict that Samantha and Franklin should be together. But hold on, there was a catch. The judge recommended that Samantha should loosen her grip a little and strive to lead a more fulfilling life. By doing so, she would become more confident and secure in herself, earning Franklin's respect and admiration in the process. It sounds like a solid plan, but what do you think? Is this the perfect solution to their problem? You've never wanted to treat another woman better than you've treated her. She's even gone so far as to say, I will tolerate another woman in my home in order to keep you. And as you live a larger life and become a more interesting person, you will be more uh, strong and more sturdy, and he will respect you more. <laughs> See what I'm saying?